Landscape Artist of the Year, Season 4, Episode 6. I captured these images about two weeks ago, so I really honestly don't remember what happens in this episode. We'll find out together. Remember, this is a recap. If you want to watch the whole thing, go on Prime Video. And let's get started. And if you would consider, please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe because that would be a bonus to my day. Thank you. As usual, we get to see the artists with their submission pieces. I believe this is a collage. Yeah, I'm pretty sure about that. And we'll find out as the program goes on. It's so much fun to see them with the work that they've done. And remember, all three judges have to give a yes for them to appear on the program. And many of these people have applied many, many times. And then the judges are looking for variety. Here's an interesting one. Now, for some reason, on the screen captures for this episode, I couldn't get rid of the subtitles, so we get to see the artists' names under their work. That makes it a lot more fun and a lot easier to go, you know, and look on, you know, Google and see what they're up to now. This was um, 2018, so quite a few years have passed since then and now. Oh, I always love pictures with bridges on them. I never know how to do something like that. Yeah, as soon as things become industrial, I, I, that, that's, that's a different kind of challenge. But look at the depth. Wow, such depth. And editing, you know, really nice editing. Wow. Ooh. Boy, I'm going to keep my eye on her. That's, I, I'm kind of thrilled by that. Ooh, a colorist. Oh, I love a colorist who does color value swap outs. Because you know the night, we've all seen a, a city at night, and it doesn't have this kind of vibrancy of color. And that's what a colorist will do. They will push color to a greater extent. There's a considerable depth in that painting as well. I also like the format, long and thin. Now this, this we have to talk about for a second. Uh, this woman uses a typewriter to make all of the marks on the paper. This is sort of fascinating in a way, but quite time consuming. And so she's at a disadvantage for today. But I do find this absolutely fascinating. I'm not familiar with this as an art form. Yeah, there she is with her typewriter. I mean, <laughs> how she figured this out is, is amazing to me. And she really is a good artist. I mean, she, she, I don't know if she sketches ahead of time. I have no idea how she does this, but I find it interesting. Will it work for a gallery commission, which is, you know, the final prize in this program? That, uh, you know, I'm not convinced about that. Uh, this is quite an accomplished landscape. Yeah, look, at, wow. Um, really nice use of a diagonal there. You've got to get some diagonals. You know, we all see a uh, landscape in terms of vertical, and uh, which obviously the mountains have here, but without that dark, you know, vertical triangle in the front, it would have been kind of a yawn of a painting. Here's a really beautiful cityscape. Wow, look at the depth there. Wow, that's a fascinating painting to me. He's not a colorist, but you know, in terms of, you know, um, making something beautiful out of nothing in a way. You know, you don't. he didn't travel to the south of France, for example, to, you know, for the perfect light there and all that. This is just, you know, an everyday scene, but he, he made it extraordinary. And this is a monochromatic artist who works in black and gray, black, white, and gray. So you really, he has to really have control over his values because he, you can't, um, uh, you, you know, you don't have color as a device. So let's see what happens. Now where they are today is Inverary Castle, which is kind of like, you know, for me as an American, it's sort of like, I want to be a princess in that castle. Although, given what's happening with the royal family, I don't know that anybody wants to be a princess at the moment. But that's it's an extraordinary structure and quite a challenge as an artist for what you do. I know for sure that I would have to look at this image and say, uh, i got to break this up. Yeah, you see, I would do something like that, break it up, because it's... It is Landscape Art of this Year, and so sometimes you have to decide what your painting is about. Is your painting about the building? Is your painting about the land? Is your painting about the sky? And in this case, I think this is probably equally considerate of all those things. But we will carry on. Now, the artists are in pods, they call them, and so they have protection, a little bit of protection from wind and some protection from sun. And that's it. 
you know, they, they are allowed a, a seat. I think they're given a table, m maybe more than one table from what I can tell, so they can put their, their paint down and, and what they need. And almost everybody uses some sort of te technological uh, device as well. Four hours into the pro program, the um, artists turn their easels around. Now what they've really done here is what they really do is they have four hours to work, then they have a lunch break, and then they have four hours to work again. So here is our first, um, our first artist. I'm, this painting could have been done anywhere. I don't see any reference to the castle at all. And for me, it is a wall of green. You know, sometimes it's really helpful to make a chart of your possible greens and your possible mixes of greens so you don't end up with a painting that is kind of what I think of like a wall of green. When I talk about a wall of green, what I mean is, you know when you have regular vision and then you put on sunglasses which are tinted and suddenly everything's green -er? That's kind of what's happening here. Green has taken over the entire palette and so pure color is gone except for, you know, the, the um, orange daylilies. Now, the orange choice of daylilies was smart because that's the complement to green, but I'm not getting any depth here. Getting a lot of texture. All right, here's an example of where, like I was saying, this has some compositional issues for me, uh, only because it's, it's the, it's, the castle is an island surrounded by oceans. I just think it would have been more effective if they had been able to somehow be able to carve that the big form of the castle into smaller forms. See how it seems to work better here, in a way? You know, when you come and zoom in, it just seemed isolated, which it probably is. I, you know, that's the, that's the hard thing about, oh, even I like that, that composition better. Yeah, you know, you're tasked, and, uh, you know, to bring in an image from a certain place where you are, and this person absolutely came in and did it. And yet something about it feels not embedded in the land. It just feels like it might have been cut and pasted in. So I really like the work on the hill in the background, and I also like the work in the sky. It's beautiful work. All right, here is our, I'm going to call her a typist artist. Well, I guess that's what she is. Making those marks. My gosh, all those marks. So by making marks, she's able to layer them to be able to make some value shifts, which is kind of amazing. And look how delightful these little forms are. Wow, look at those tiny little things. I don't know how she does that, but she does. It's so unique, so fascinating, so whimsical. It's, it's kind of delightful. Uh, but it will, you know, how do you, you know, again, how do you judge this against painting? I, that is, uh, that is the judge's job, not mine. So now when we pull back, I have to kind of look at it and say, okay, just imagine it was a final drawing, you know, instead of thinking about the, the whimsy and the delight of it being um, type. And it, it's just not very strong. And yet when you come in for those individual slices, it's, it's lovely. So uh, we will have to wait and see what the judges do about this. Now, this is that monochromatic artist. I, this is pretty powerful, I have to, I have to say. Uh, he's got such great command over his values. He's, when I caught, caught, say in my tagline, you know, mass for value, mix for color, this guy's <laughs> massing for value, and that's it. <laughs> he's not mixing for color. He's massing for value. But if you don't mass your values correctly, it would have not read as being forms, and they are forms. Now that's kind of fascinating to me, although for my own personal taste, and now we get to come in a little bit closer to look at what some of his brushwork was, uh, I, I, I don't want a, a dark painting on my wall. That is, that is not my vibe, but I, it probably is for a more modern audience. Wow, I love the sculpture in that tree. Yeah, you have to leave enough space in the branches. That's that's where, oh, that's a really good example of massing for value. So it reads as a tree. And it reads as a tree because of all the um, shapes for the birds to fly through. That's what really makes it a tree. That's, that's really careful observation. And now let's look at it one more time. I'm begging for, yeah, well, if I squint my eyes, ah, uh, 
Is there a di there are some diagonals going on? Yeah, yeah. Oh, this fellow really knows what he's doing. I I I wish he it wanted color, but he doesn't. All right, here's yeah. This is more what just me personally what I would have done in this setting because I'm kind of like a rule rule follower. You know, someone tells me to follow the rules, and I'll say okay, of course. I love rules. I love structure. So, you know, being in front of this castle, I would feel like you needed to represent the castle in some way. And I think this was a, a really good way to do it. Lots of texture. Yeah, coming in close. Look at that. that that's, I think that's done with the palette knife, don't you? Which I'm not familiar with, but you can see the building of forms there and that under undertone of they must have primed the canvas maybe with orange, which would be very smart you know, put the compliment as your tone before putting on your colors on top of that. Uh, when I squint my eyes, it's not quite as strong, but, um, you know, hashtag Joe is always wrong. They're not going to like this one. I know they're not going to like this one, and they're not going to like this one because I do. <laughs> Aw, look at that. That's a lovely little moment, isn't it? Maybe that's why I really like small paintings. They're just full of, of little moments. Actually, really good paintings are full of little moments as well. And, and here we're, we're witnessing one. <gasps> this. Oh, I adore this. I adore this. I can't tell you how much I adore this. And in the comments, you'll probably disagree with me because you're saying, Joe, why did they put that big purple form there? I don't know. But put your finger over that big purple form and the painting is not exciting. That purple form makes that painting have impact. That pure hue right there, right where it is, is fantastic. My guess is maybe the inspiration came from something like a red maple or one of those sort of early spring um, trees that you see that can be kind of leaning toward red and purple. But of course it would not never have been as purple as this. I, but I love this. I, I love this painting. It has lost and found edges. He's dealing with warm tones in the stone and then going cool behind with the mountain so you get a sense of distance. Oh, I'm going to look this fella up because I want to see what he's doing today. I am such a big fan of his paintings. This is a painting I'm really going to remember, and I think it's a painting that's going to influence me for, for quite a long time. Oh, wow, look at the work on those really distant hills as well. Working those neutrals. Oh. This person has such good command over temperature and composition and boy, all the things I think that you need for, for painting, which right now you probably know means he won't win. But this was so long ago, I, I actually don't remember. Oh, I find this one delightful. This one, uh, yeah, I really like this one. I know, it's a little Disney, I get it. Um, because, you know, because of the color. But, uh, yeah. It's got some really, that, now, I, maybe you're thinking, oh, but Joe, it's another wall of green, but it isn't. There's a lot of blue in there, and there's also a lot of that pinkish or purplish kind of tone going on that breaks up that wall of blue. Here in a really, really little detail of the garden, we can see the palette that they're working with, and it is cohesive, and it does work. Again, lost and found edges, and yet, and a really good understanding of value and form. Yeah, I think this one really works. And here the castle looks less isolated than in an earlier one we had. I like this painting. So that tells you they're not, they're not going to. Yet yeah, for me, you know, as a rule follower, it's like the person showed up, you put them in front of this, and they responded in a beautiful way. How can you not reward this? That, that would be a question I would ask the judges, but, um, but we will see. Here is the collage, and I believe it's paper. We've had some collage artists that work with fabric, but I think this one is paper. I could be wrong. I'm a fan of collage art. I think it's really, really cool. My brain doesn't work this way, but it, you know, it has to work on the same basic principles that painting does. You're, you're doing the same thing, you know, in terms of creating form and, and using your values and whatnot. It's just that you, you, you're using pattern in a way that, that painters don't. It's... I'm not sure what to say about it. I think it's a really valid and beautiful form. Um, looks like there might be some paint on there as well. I guess you would call it mixed media. It's interesting. Um, I'm not 
not sure what's going to happen with that. This might be captivating to the judges. It probably will be. Now the final judging begins. So the artists have had an incredibly long day. And also, I should have said earlier, the day started out sunny, but as the day went on, as most of the days do in this program, it becomes cloudy and windy and gray. So you have that challenge as well. Here they are, all of our artists, and only three will be selected for the semifinals of this particular episode, and only one will go forward to the uh, semifinals of this program. So our first semi-finalist for today is the uh, monochromatic artist. And um, I think the judges really loved this. Um, sometimes I watch with the sound off. Almost always I watch with the sound off. Um, mm, oh, this one. Oh, please pick this one. All right, I already know they won't because of how much I love it. But I'm going to go find out who this is, and I'm going to follow them. And maybe in the future they would do an interview with me. I, I find that such an inspiring piece. Wow. Oh, and this. Oh, okay. And we, and we talked about, uh, I don't know how this holds up against the other three. I just don't, you know, it's, it's um, like comparing, um, this is sushi compared to um, hamburger and french fries. You know, it's just, it's just so different in terms of how it's made. So here is the painting on the left is the painting that they did in order to be on the program. And the one on the right is the one that they did today. Now remember the one on the left they had unlimited time to work on. And quite frankly, it doesn't look a whole lot different than, uh, than what they did today with limited time. So he's, he, can, he can get a job done. This one, you know, we talk, we've talked about why I, I don't think this, in, if I was judging it, I would not put this through because I don't think it's going to hold up on a gallery wall. A gallery wall is an enormous space. I know she would have unlimited time, but remember she had limited time for the entry piece. And in the end, although it's made in an interesting way, it's it's basically, you know, a, a sketch. Oh, oh, and I was crazy about his entry and now I'm crazy about what he did today as well. Oh my gosh. All right. I'm in love with this person. I think he should win the whole thing, the whole year, the whole. <laughs> he wins everything, which already tells you, I know they're not going to pick him. They never pick. I shouldn't say never. I think it's happened once where they pick someone that I just fall in love with. But here they are deciding among the three which one will go forward. And we're about to find out who the winner is. Dun, 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 dun. Get ready for me to be disappointed, but I hope you'll be pleased. And our winner is our monochromatic painter. So he will be in the semifinals, which is not the next episode. Wait a minute. I think it is the next episode. Ooh, that'll be exciting. The next episode is the semifinals. All right. See you there. So remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. See you next time. Bye-bye.